Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Uh, let's see what we got here. Comic book generations. By the way, did you notice there was an uptick uh, lately in articles talking about this uh, this epidemic we've got? It seems to come in waves now, about every two months, three months, uh, where the comic book fans are all dying. Like the people who are buying comics, they're, they're, they're reaching the ripe old age of 40, 45, and they're all dying. Just just this, this plague of death in comic book fans. That's why we've got, that's why comic books have to change and I mean, if we can't, if we can't excite the new readers, and they were dead anyway, because all the comic book readers are dead. They're all, t- it's very weird to me. I don't remember seeing any other industry where people kind of decided, other than maybe meth, uh, where people decide like, you, you know, the, 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 the age that, uh, the age of decease, of decease, that, that top bar or lifespan is going to be 40. But in comics, it is, and and uh, I was thinking about this. I mean, look, granted, when you've got when you've got creators, editors talking about uh, teeth falling out of their head, just just ejecting from their skull uh, randomly, and uh, you know, then it makes sense that you think that, oh my god, I'm like 32 now, and teeth are are vomiting themselves out of my head, and so by the time I'm 40, I'm definitely going to be dead. But you know, for what it's worth, um, you don't you don't die at 40 or 50. Or 60. In a lot of cases, you, you keep on going. And uh, you might go, well, I don't see any of those people around. Well, because most of them have saved money and like gone off into the uh, into other areas. You know, they're, they're not still uh, hanging out in Manhattan, you know, with six people to a tiny apartment. They've, they've, they've moved on. But, uh, but anyway, let's read this mail. It says, hey, Perch, I was inspired to write to you after listening to your video talking about how people only seem to discuss comics from 20 plus years ago. And virtually everything from today will be forgotten in a few decades. I was wondering if you could think this could potentially be the result of different generations having different tastes. Well, sure. For example, I remember reading that Dave Cockrum uh, that thought John Byrne's Fantastic Four run was so bad that someone should sit on him. Cockrum was a guy who met his wife through the letters column of Lee and Kirby's Fantastic Four number 34. Our Grunwald, another big fan of Lee and Kirby run, gave Tom DeFalco the idea for the Skull Retcron because he hated Johnny's relationship with Alicia so much. Why would he date somebody who looks like his sister? I mean, you know, don't knock until you try it. I'm just, I'm just saying. Living down here in the South has given me different perspectives on this. Sorry. I, sorry. Okay. He said in reference to Fantastic Four number eight, however, Burns Fantastic Four is still generally regarded as one of the greatest comic runs of all time, despite the objections of Lee and Kirby fans from that era. Um, for, you know, for what it's worth with Dave Cockrum, um, I don't think it, that had as much to do with the actual story content to the fact that, you know, he was one of the people and there were several people who thought, uh, John Byrne was a humongous prick. And, uh, you know, I think people who also got along well with Jim Shooter and, and all that kind of stuff tended to not like Byrne. Byrne, Byrne I, look, I, Byrne is one of those people who I, I love his comics and I love what he did. Uh, I completely understand why some people didn't like it. I mean, he, he, he made himself unlikable in, in many areas. Um, still, still, I, I love his work and to me, the work trumps any of that, but I mean, what was it that like he burned an effigy of Jim Shooter after he was fired? I mean, like, um, you know, you, you watch that clip of the death of Superman and John Bird's like, who cares? I killed Superman, brought it back in the same issue. And it's like that, that stuff tended to rub people the wrong way. You know, it's, it's wild anyway. Um, definitely your point is correct, but where Burn is concerned, I think a few different things. Anyway, personally, I think you're not seeing as much discussion of newer material is because there aren't a lot of new readers under the age of 40. One might argue a lack of quality is why young people are staying away, but I think it's more they see comics as an inferior medium, especially compared to video games. I remember my friends complaining that uh, some of the story beats of the Gears of War games would take place in a DC comic series that they didn't want to read. Despite tying directly into one of the best-selling video game series of all time and actually introduced characters in those games, the comics sold like 10,000 copies per issue. Worse than Vendetti's Hawkman. Oh, that's poor Vendetti. Uh, additionally, you might argue that current manga sales shows that there is an interest uh, in comics among kids, but I think this comes from a desire to get ahead of a popular anime like I did when Full Metal Alchemist came out in 2005, or whatever it was or wherever it was, um, as opposed to wanting to experience the medium of comics. Therefore, for all we know, the majority of Gen Z might find something like Axelrod's Hot Girl to be a masterpiece. Eh, 
But we'll never know because they aren't going to bother with Western comics, no matter how good someone like you or Western Thinking Critical thinks uh, they are, I feel. As a result, the stuff that gets talked about for the most part will always be the older material. Apologies to creators like Sean Gordon Murphy, Alex Ross, Mark Lahr, John Thigman. Perhaps I'm just crazy, but I can only speak from experience. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Will you too? Um, look, I don't... I, so, you know, speaking as, as you know, retailer who's sold to a lot of these audiences, certainly in the last 20 years, um, it's, uh, you know, for, first off, yeah, I, I definitely acknowledge there's manga fans who are reading it to catch up on the anime. But, you know, the sales indicate it's more than that. And I, I think that a lot of, you know, manga is popular. If you go to Target or Walmart and you go to the kids section or the book section and you look at the YA stuff or you go to Barnes & Noble and you look at that area, you will see tons of people there swarmed around. And uh, like YA graphic novels. Uh, my younger daughter cannot get enough of the Babysitter Club books. She will buy them forever. Um, you could see it coming because both of my kids loved Dogman uh, when they were younger, and and so there's and there you know there were TV shows for that stuff. Uh, so they they definitely like reading graphic novels, and I think it's popular. The the problem is comics, and and if you really look at it with a very critical eye, stop you know don't think about it like a comic fan like you and I would think of with the great runs and all the rest, but just look at it as a somebody new to comics, picking up a comic and reading it. And then I, I want you to like read or have next to you babysitter club or, or any number of those books. Again, go to target Walmart, look at that section. There's hundreds in some cases of kind of stuff you've never heard of. They're all kid graphic novels. They're all slice of life school type. I mean, they're age appropriate. They're things that, you know, young girls, uh, who are 8, 10, 12 would enjoy, you know, like first crush and wacky hijinks at school. And that's what they are. But there's tons of them. And they're extremely popular. Like they are selling like crazy. But I want you to like pick up one of those books and just, you know, I don't want you to be mocked at for why is this, you know, grown adult looking at this stuff. But but try reading some of that stuff. Or if you have kids, grab, pick it up and read it. What you'll notice is that it reads a lot more like John Byrne's Fantastic Four or like Claremont's X-Men or like, uh, you know, Wolfman and Perez on uh, Teen Titans. It reads like that. The story has a flow to it. And it, the, you know, extremely different story, but the style, the reading style is the same. I, I promise you. Now, I want you to pick up like My Hero Academia or Chainsaw Man or books like that and read it. And you'll find, again... Very similar, Com completely different genre, completely different, you know, characters and, and lots, lots of differences, but you'll notice that the story flow, the kind of how it draws you in all kind of feels very, very similar, very related. And then if you pick up, you know, a uh, white widow and you try reading that or hot girl, or even the you know more popular Western comics, and you try reading that issue. It's a completely different beast. And, you know, it, this is an interesting experiment you could try for yourself. Just, like, pick up a comic from the Silver Age or from the 80s. You know, pick up that uh, John Byrne Man of Steel series he did and read that comic. And you're going to notice that comic reads differently. This isn't just comics to graphic novels. It reads differently. It, first of all, reads like there's a lot more to it. There's just a lot more packed into that comic. One of the things that always amazes me, um, and I'm always struck by whenever I read like Silver Age, Superman, or any of that kind of stuff, is they've got like three or four stories going on in this comic, and they're it's it's dense, and I mean that in a good way. There's just a lot of story in there. There's just it it's it's packed, and if you read comics from today. And in fairness, it's not just today. You can see some comics in the 90s this way. You can see some comics in the aughts. And I'm sure there are comics in the 70s and 80s that read the same way. But by and large, the tone of a lot more of the comics is a lot more shallow, a lot more... The, the story is it just doesn't have the same feel to it. I'll, I'll try and you know, do some of those side-by-side -side comic comparisons. You should check that out. It's striking. It's, it's the storytelling has shifted. And you might say, well... You know, it needs to shift to, to appear to the new audience, appeal to the new audience, except that the new audience are reading books that feel a lot more like the old books than the new books. 
So, I, I mean, your your premise, I, I don't think is wrong. Um, I do think that, you know, there is plenty of interest in comics. It's just very different comics. It's coming from a different source and it's doing different things. And there has been just a big tonal shift to comics of today. And I think if you are a comic creator or you're doing a crowdfunding book or, or anything else, it's tempting to look at kind of what's been put out lately. And what I would advise is that you instead, you know, really kind of immerse yourself, go way back, go to like the 60s and 70s, read several of those books and try and kind of see, you know, how is the storytelling fundamentally different? Because it is. But my feeling is a lot of those memories are caught in those older books because there was just more going on. I, again, it may, this might be unfair, but if you take, uh, you know, what, who did the, the, the Wasp book? Was that Whitley? You take that entire run. Recently, somebody challenged me because I was making fun of uh, the uncancelable Wasp. I, I, don't, I don't know why that stuck. But anyway, read that higher series. And then I read the whole uh, Cena Gray, or not Cena Gray, sorry, the uh, Steve Orlando Iceman series. Just read it all. Um, the Cy Spurrier Amazing Nightcrawler uh, or the Uncanny Spider-Man book. And that was a book that the first issue I kind of liked because it had that feel to it. But then it, it just kind of went off the rails in all kinds of weird directions. But if you read it, the thing that you notice, if you read it all as one, is it doesn't, it doesn't read like a complete story. It just kind of reads like weird elements here and there. It's, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't capture your imagination, your mind, because it, it's not a story that is complete enough to do that. And I think that's the problem with a lot of modern comics. And again, no offense, although I'm sure it is offensive to a lot of current comic creators, the comics are being written in such a way where you just don't get that complete story. And I think there's a lot of reasons for it. We've talked about it on the channel, but it, the weird part is if the excuse for the story showing up that way is that this is what new comic readers want, then they've completely missed the mark. Because if you go actually look at what new comic readers are buying and reading, like manga, like these YA graphic novels, they they don't read like this. They don't feel like this. Anyway, try it out for yourself. It's um, it, it's wacky. Anyway, there you go. What's your what's your theory on all this? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.